we can laugh at certain episodes because they are inherently ridiculous and funny. But as Russ said, there's an underlying tragedy about this that goes beyond Donald Trump. It goes to what has become of American culture, what's become of the American psyche. How did it come to be that we glorify crass, unhinged, excessive wealth and all of the attributes that he demonstrates, cruelty, crassness, vulgarity? How is it that we have come so far and have now not even exempted the presidency of the United States from that crass culture that is so endemic in our society? We can't blame or attribute Donald Trump to Mark Burnett and The Apprentice. We can say the people who have enabled him all of his life are responsible And of course, Donald Trump is responsible for Donald Trump. Um, He had every advantage in the world. He had wealth. He had opportunity. And he turned it to self-promotion, to grotesque purposes, and has abused his fame and fortune and power ever since. But I think it also requires that we collectively look in the mirror. How did we come to think that this is admirable? Why do we attribute success, leadership, intelligence to someone who behaves this way? It is somewhat mind-blowing. And when you see the contrast between people like Kamala Harris and Liz Cheney, who were out doing events on Monday of this week, talking about honor, patriotism, decency, It's like they're in another universe. That universe is foreign to Donald Trump. He thinks, to quote a phrase, those people are suckers and losers because they care about such things, because they think of something greater than themselves. That is inconceivable to Donald Trump, who is the neediest, the most greedy, the most hollow man one can imagine. And I've talked and written about, the mainstream media is beginning to talk uh, and write about his narcissism, his real emotional and mental deficiencies. But the rest of us are supposedly sane. America doesn't have a excuse of 50, 60, 70 million people suffering from a psychological defect. They have simply lowered their standards and accepted Donald Trump as someone who is an appropriate figure to represent the United States. And that is sad. That is tragic. I hope that that is not a majority of the country or the electorate. And that when people get into that voting booth, they say, is that really what I want? Is that really the kind of person I want in the White House? And Liz Cheney made a joke that If you don't want him babysitting your kids, don't elect him president. But that is more true than we would like to believe, that people who would never in a million years trust their kids, trust their own finances, seek advice from him, are willing to give him the job of president. And that's in part because they, and unfortunately the media, have come to treat politics as a game. We've become so cynical that we no longer consider it important. We no longer consider it valuable. So we are willing to delegate it to a TV star who operates in the world of make-believe. But the good news is we still have two weeks, guys. You can still register in many places. There's same-day registration in some states. You can go out and vote. And you can implore your friends and relations and colleagues and neighbors to think hard about whether they really want someone like Donald Trump running the country. Aren't we better than he is? Aren't we better than that? And if the answer is we're not, then God help us and God help democracy because it's not sustainable without some level of what we used to call public virtue. So, 
Don't give up hope yet. Don't be demoralized. Get out and vote. Run through the tape. Two weeks to go. Thanks so much for joining us. If you like this program, please tell your friends. They can listen and follow us wherever they get their podcasts. Bye-bye.